Today I'm just going to talk to you quickly about deep cycle batteries. Um, I had a 105 amp hour deep cycle battery lead, lead acid. Um, this one here. So this is 105 amp hour, 12 volts. Um, this thing here weighs about 28 kilograms. Anyway, it's dead. It was in this battery box. Um, that thing's dead. So I was looking to upgrade to a lithium. Now, because we've been in lockdown, I've been bored. I've got my hands on an old solar battery. So this is actually a 48 volt system here. So you've got four of these battery packs that run in series. So they're 12 volts each. They run in series to give you 48 volts. Um, each one of these battery packs is 50 amp hour. So then when it's all together, you've got 50 amp hours, 48 volts. So I've actually pulled it apart. Um, so each one of these would give me a 12 volt 50 amp hour battery. Uh, inside there, it's just made up of these lithium cells. So that is a 3.2 volt lithium cell. Uh, so there's eight of these in here to give you your 12 volt 50 amp hour. So what I've done is I've actually pulled one apart and made a 25 amp hour. So there's four cells in there in series and that gives you 25 amp hour 12 volts so obviously in this pack you've got four cells to give you your 12 volts but then you've got two sets in parallel so it's a bit messy in under the lid there but basically what i've done is i've got an Anderson plug to come from the charging pack in the back of the car, from the battery charger. That will then come inside here. So that's gonna come in on here through a 25 amp fuse, which is recommended on the charger. So from the fu fuse from the charger, comes up to the buzz bar for the positive side, and obviously the buzz bar from the negative side. From the buzz bar, each of those battery packs will connect here. So basically from the charger, it's gonna be going through the buzz bar, charging the packs. Now on the discharge side, we come in here through an 80 amp fuse. This is for discharge. Through the 80 amp fuse, we're gonna go through to an on off switch, isolator on the front here. Then out of that isolator, we're gonna have two cigarette sockets. There's one on this side, one on the other side. And they are fused separately, so the fuse there for one, fuse there for the other, 20 amp fuse in each. The other, and as well out of the isolator, we come into the output. So obviously you've got output studs on the front. So they are only fused by this 80 amp. So they are pretty hot studs there. We've got, uh, and then also we've got the output. Yeah, put in some plug in the top. Okay, so then from there, I'm gonna run a lead to some other outlets I've got in the back of the car, a cigarette socket and some USB charge leads. So that's basically what I've done here. Um, haven't finished yet, obviously. Um, just waiting for those battery packs to get put together so they can go inside the box. And then I'll connect it all up and I'll show you the finished product. Something I mentioned earlier was the weight of that AGM battery, about 28 kilos. Now, the lithium packs I'm making up are about four kilos each. So three of those, you're looking at about 12 kilos. So it's near on half the weight and an extra 50 amp hour on top of the 105 amp hour battery that was there. Bearing in mind that the AGM, you can really only take down to 50% depth of discharge. Um, so it's really only, the 100 amp hour batch is really only 50 amp hour. Um, so I've almost got two to three times, not quite three times battery power 
and half the weight with that lithium setup. Um, something else I've done is put one of these 25 amp hour packs that I've made up into this charging station. So again, um, turn it on, it's got a light on it, it's got a socket on the side outlet. Um, I wouldn't really use it to jump start a car because the lithium deep cycle battery is not really made for that, but you can use it to, to charge the car battery, um, but I wouldn't be using it as an actual jump starter. But again, because of the light weight, that's light. I only just fit that in there, as you can see, it's a tight fit. Um, but it's, uh, put it this way, I think this was a 17 amp hour, no, an 11 amp hour AGM battery inside this originally, which obviously died. So it's now 25 amp hour lithium. Um, and yeah, as I say, it's lightweight, it's portable, run your cam fridge for quite a while. One of the main differences between the lithium and lead acid battery, whether it's um, a flooded AGM or gel battery, uh, there's a couple of main differences. One is the charging profile um, and the voltages that they charge to. So with the lithium battery, you need to make sure you've got a lithium charger. Um, the other is the fact that lithium batteries really need some sort of um, cell balancing because they're made up of lots of individual cells. Um, so, you, you know, they normally have what's called a BMS, a battery management system. Um, so that just controls the voltage of each cell to make sure that as it charges or discharges, that the cells remain relative to each other um, a constant voltage. Um, now, obviously, I don't have a BMS in my homemade lithium battery pack. There's a couple of ways around it. Um, if you look here, these packs that come straight out of the solar battery, they've actually got a balancing lead. So what this does is uh, each set of cells, so there's four sets of cells in here. Um, we've got, uh, I don't know if you can see here, so the first cable, which is white, goes to the negative, and then each cable after that goes to the positive from each cell. So all it does is it gets a reference of each cell. So the nominal voltage is 3.6 volts for each cell. So what it does is normally the BMS controls the charge profile of each cell. And so it just makes sure that they stay around the same voltage for each cell. Otherwise you'll have one cell getting um, too high in voltage as it charges uh, or too low in voltage as it discharges. And then that imbalance is how um, fires can start. If, if it gets too high in voltage, the cell will overheat and it will start a fire. So obviously I don't have that set up. I'm just going to be charging them straight off the positive and negative terminals here. Um, what I do have, obviously the, the charge from the back of the car is for lithium batteries. What I do have is just a small uh, balance charge. And now this is for um, hobby batteries, remote control cars, planes, etc. Um, but what I can do is just use this to make sure that the cells are balanced. It's got some balancing ports on the side here. So what I can do is every now and then just plug this into each pack individually and make sure that the packs are balanced. What I have got coming, they're not here yet, um, is basically for each of these packs, an individual balancer, which is really just a set of resistors uh, and a little bit of hardware. And what that does is pretty much does what this does, but as, as it's charging and you plug it in there, leave it in, and it will just control each pack separately. So that's my way around of having to pay for an expensive BMS. Um, as long as you keep an eye on the voltages um, and test them occasionally and make sure they don't go too high, too low for each cell, then that's fine. Um, you don't need the $200 BMS just to control it. Okay, just as a comparison, I weighed the old AGM battery and the case and that was 29 kilograms. And then weighing up the three lithium cells and the case was 16.6 kilograms. So it's pretty much half the weight, 
which is ridiculous. Um, the other thing just to note before I finish off, here's the leads that I made up. Um, so I've got, they're, they're sort of color coded. That plugs in from the uh, input, from the back of the car that goes to the battery. Um, and then the other ones I've just left gray, so they're the return uh, from the battery back to the outlets just to try and make it simple, stupid. Um, but that's about it. So I wouldn't recommend trying to make your own battery pack if you've got no idea what's going on. Um, I've got a little bit of background in the electrical industry. So um, you just need to be careful with batteries. They store a lot of energy and can be dangerous. Okay, so here's the finished product. Well, it's a bit dusty, but anyway. Um, so inside the lid here, you can see that's one of the packs. I have the other two underneath. This is just some, some foam, just so the packs aren't bouncing around inside there. On the side here, you can see these are the uh, resistive units that balance out the cells. So there's one, two, three, one for each pack. Um, as I mentioned earlier, they are kind of taking over the role of the BMS. And as the units charge, these just determine the voltage of each cell relative to each other um, and obviously just balances out that voltage so they charge at the same rate at each cell in each pack. Um, I've used it a few times, um, managed to run my camp fridge for three days without charging so uh, it works pretty good. I'm happy with it.